Um, so what we ended with in the last video was this expression for the heat equation. And we can modify this a little bit. So um, what is a change in temperature, right, in time? Um, that's going to be proportional to the divergence of the gradient plus whatever source term um, we have for our system. Okay. Um, okay, so this is our PDE. Um, whenever we have PDEs, right, because we're taking into account both space and time um, or just multiple variables, um, what we need to do is specify a, um, or specify kind of an initial condition, right? Um, since we're worrying about time, right? So this is saying how heat flows in time. Question is, well, how does heat start, right? What is your starting um, configuration? So what we're gonna talk about next are um, initial and boundary um, value problems or the initial and boundary um, conditions that kind of give us a well-posed um, problem to solve, okay? So the initial condition, right, is just, well, here's our temperature distribution depending on space at time zero, and that's gonna be some initial temperature distribution, okay? So um, this, is our initial initial condition. Um, but in addition to this, we also need to specify some sort of boundary condition, okay, or boundary values. Um, and so as before, we have a few options, okay? We can either specify the temperature on the boundary. Maybe there's some water bath or whatever that's keeping that temperature fixed. What does it look like mathematically? Well, the temperature um, kind of in space and time is going to be some prescribed temperature in space and time. But here, this argument X, this can only come from the boundary, not from the interior. So we're saying here's a temperature on the boundary. Um, the distinction is this is where we're saying it's on the boundary. This is where we're saying where we're saying, here's that temperature that it takes. Um, so we can prescribe the temperature on the boundary. We can also describe something like the flux on the boundary and specify how much um, heat is flowing in or out, okay, through time. Um, so again, so what this looks like, right, property of the material, um, temperature gradient, this whole thing here is a flux coming from Fourier's law. Um, this normal vector is going to be the normal at the boundary, okay? So this N right here will also depend on X. Um, but we're saying, well, the kind of the flux along the boundary, right, is gonna be some pre prescribed function. Again, we're saying, where does X come from? Well, X has to come from boundary. Um, as I said, that first term is coming from Fourier's law, it's the flux. Um, so we have prescribed temperature, we have the flux in the boundary, and we can also mix and match, right? And so as in the one-dimensional situation, um, we can have something where we say, right, the flux on the boundary is uh, how much heat or energy are you losing on the boundary? Well, that's gonna be proportional to um, the difference in temperature between the temperature on the boundary and some baseline or prescribed temperature on the boundary, okay? Yeah, but these are essentially the same kinds of scenarios that we had for, um, right, the one dimensional case. Either prescribing the temperature, prescribing the flux or the flow, or mixing the two, but specifying something of those on the boundary. Okay. Um, so let's look at some pictures. So 
Here, I'm gonna draw it for 2D, um, just cause it's a little easier to visualize. Uh, this region right here, it's kind of a blob in the plane. This is our region R. And then this blue thing here is what I've been referring to as a boundary for the region. Okay. Um, okay. So question is, well, how does, how does heat flow in time? Okay. Um, so here, what we're doing is we're assuming that on the boundary, we have zero temperature, right? So if you were to graph this function U, it needs to be clamped to the boundary. It has to be zero at the boundary. Okay. Um, but the initial condition could be non-zero on the interior, right? I guess, yeah, the initial condition also has to be zero on the boundary. So what we might get is something, maybe a profile like, like that. So here are two little hills, sort of valley between them. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully this picture kind of makes sense. Okay, um, but here's a graph of the temperature, say at time zero. Okay, and so if we let the system flow for a little bit, well, what's going to happen is temperature is going to flow, or energy is going to flow from the regions of high temperature to low temperature. Okay, so these two peaks are going to, or hills are going to decrease. This valley might increase a tiny bit, um, may also decrease. It, it just depends on kind of the, the gradient in those two directions, if it beats out the gradient in those two directions. Um, but we may end up with something like, let's see, something like that, right? Where things have kind of leveled off, everything started to kind of decrease. Um, and if we let the system run for long enough, then uh, it's a really bad picture, but temperature is decreasing, right? Well, where is all this energy going? Um, in this case, it's flowing out the boundary, right? Um, because we're saying, right? The temperature on the boundary has to be zero, but we're not saying anything about the flux. So it can be massive flux, a lot of energy being lost, and that's in this case what will happen. Um, but the idea is that the temperature profile is going to you know, go flat, and it should eventually go to zero. Okay. Cool. So Again, as in one dimensional, one dimensional problem, we can ask, well, what about steady state solutions? Okay. Um, are there solutions where if you let the system flow for long enough, um, you, you hit some sort of equilibrium? Okay. So in this case up here, right, if we specified zero temperature at the boundaries, the equilibrium will be right, zero temperature on the interior, because all the energy is flowed out, flown out. Um, but you may have other interesting situations, right? Maybe you have a non-zero temperature on the boundary, or maybe you have some flux conditions, okay? Um, but the question we're asking is the same, right? We want a solution, right, um, to the heat equation, some temperature or energy profile that doesn't actually depend on time, okay? And so that's what I've written here. So a priori temperature may depend on space and time, um, but what we're looking for is one that only depends on space. Okay. So if we want a solution of this form, well, right, take a time derivative. This doesn't depend on time. So we're going to end up with an expression like this, right? Um, on the left-hand side, originally this was C rho uh, du dt, right? But du dt is zero, so that disappears. Okay, and this PD hold, PDE holds within our region R, okay, two or three dimensional region. Um, okay, so in general, this can be a much more difficult to solve, especially 
a lot more difficult than the one dimensional situation. Again, because you're working with kind of um, multiple direction or multiple variables, and we don't yet have tools to really address um, these kinds of problems, but we'll, we'll develop them later in this course. Um, okay, but what if we make some assumptions? What if we start rewriting things? Well, if K zero is constant, okay, so back up here, if K zero is constant, you can just pull it out. Okay, so we get an expression like this. This is a constant. This may still be a function of um, space and time. Um, but we rearrange things, right? So move Q to the other side, divide by K zero, we get something like this, okay? So this is a function of space. This is a bunch of derivatives of U. And as, as I said before, this, is, this nabla squared is another notation for this thing, okay? Um, but the key thing here is this is just some function of space. So what we get is an equation that looks like this, okay? Where this, so nabla squared of temperature is equal to some given, given function in the interior, okay? Um, these problems come up a lot, and so they have a special name, um, Poisson's equation, or a Poisson equation, or a Poisson problem. Poisson is associated to this, this kind of thing. Um, okay, so, so that's one kind of variation on the, or one form of this problem. Um, another one we can get, same assumption that K zero is constant, um, but now we can also assume, or now we're going to assume that there are no sources. Okay, so this function Q, space is zero. So if we make these assumptions, we get, an equation that looks like this, okay? Zero is equal to nabla squared of u. Um, this also shows up a lot. So this has a special name. Um, this is called Laplace's equation, okay? Um, and these functions are important enough that generally, um, I can write here, so solutions, um, so your solution function u, uh, these functions are usually called harmonic. Okay, but this is just another kind of equation um, that can show up that's associated to some of these heat flow um, problems. Yeah. Um, 